Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. How's everybody doing? We're still studying. We're still trying to figure this out. Um, I think we're in it. I think we're right in it. Uh, we're getting a lot of signs. A lot of people are making comments about having dreams. I just had a weird dream of being on, it's either a large river or like an ocean and I could see to the bottom, like all the way to the bottom. It was so clean, the water. And there was all kinds of like a turtle and all kinds of uh, animals in there, and, uh, you know, fish and everything else. And they were so vivid in color. I, I don't recall dreaming in that much color before. And uh, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. I wonder if it was my backyard in heaven. I'm not sure. But we can always hope. Hope is what uh, the things that God says that uh, the bride will do. The bride is watching. The work we do trying to figure this out is just naturally what we do. At the end of the video, I'm going to go through the three different Gospels, um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and show you the differences in the watchers and the warning to each group um, to uh, separate them so you can see. As you know, Sandy has made a website called endtime-studies.com. And in there, you can find a lot of the watchers and their timelines and um, different stuff. It has nothing to do with me. She did this on her own. And she has uh, worked very hard fixing my dates. I was off doing my math and everything, but she's fixed them all. And, and it's actually very enlightening what I found. Remember, I said that it seems like all these calendars are going to line up. That God might just take all the calendars and put them together and use them all. Um, and when you look at it, what I'm going to show you, it's pretty amazing. And let me get to that for you. Let's see here. This is hers. The dates are correct. I've gone through mine and fixed my dates. Uh, she did, she has a computer program. And uh, I've showed you this before. It's pretty amazing. Um, but I can't circle her dates. So I have to go back to my uh, timeline. But I did fix my timeline. Uh, to Sandy's date. She did a very good job on this. I really like this. She actually has a, my other calendar in there of the entire year. And um, a couple of things, again, I take pictures during the week or since my last video of things that uh, interest me. Somebody came out with this. I don't recall who it was. Um, I watch a lot of videos, listen to a lot of videos while I'm working and stuff. And uh, somebody came up with this. Uh, it might have been Steve Fletcher, I'm not sure, but notice that it's exactly 888 months from May 14th, 1948 to May 14th, 2022. May 14th is, of course, Israel's 74th birthday. And remember the argument that um, Satan had with God over the bones of Moses in that he argued he should be able to have those, and God stead, stead, you know, told him to stand back. Uh, no, you, you can't have them. And uh, to this day, I don't think we know where those bones are. God has hidden them uh, because Satan wanted them for some reason. But as far as legalities go, um, he did not have rights to those. And God adheres to a specific timeline on purpose. God does not, we think he's delayed, but he has not delayed. All these dates that we have found are stepping stones to the other side of the creek and, until we can see the shore and just imagine you're stepping. You can see the next stone, but you can't see the stone after that because of the fog. You know the other side is coming, but you still have to take each stepping stone on the way across that creek to reach the other side. And that's what we're doing. The watchers will watch. We will attempt to figure this out. At the end of the day, um, Amos 3, 7, God is going to warn each and every single one of us in his own way that this moment's about to happen. And each one of us will hear it in our own way. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I believe, I believe that God will, because he will not break his own rules, I believe he will wait until 
just after May 14th. It might be on May 14th. You might wait a few days after May 14th because of making certain that the time is fulfilled. Remember, he comes back in the fourth year and uh, to check the, uh, well, in the third year, he comes to check to see if uh, it's producing any fruit, no fruits produced. And it says, why cumber the earth? And he says, dig it up. He says, let it go one more year to 74 years. And I heard somebody say today, I can't remember the, the person's name in the Bible that was 74 years old also. So 74 is a very important number to God. I pulled over this morning and I saw this. I did not know what this was. And um, I pulled over with my wife and said, this is it. We're going home now. <laughs> I, thought, I said, there's no point. We were on our way to work at 547 in the morning. I was a little late because I pulled over to take a picture of this. I thought it was a fish in the air. And, and I, I did not know. I think what I've heard is that this is the space shuttle taking off, which I find strange because it started over there to the right. And maybe for you, it's in reverse. I'm not sure. Um, but it went from right to left, and it just it never went up. It just seemed to go to the side. I, I didn't understand. I, th I did not think that it was the shuttle. I thought this was it, and we were going. So I pulled over and took a picture of it, told my wife. I said, I don't think we're going to work today. I think we're going home. But uh, it was the shuttle, uh, she said. So. All right, here's the timeline. That's the same timeline you saw before, same exact times on it only this is my handwritten one and as you know down here in the bottom left the equalux is the last day of the year we'll go up here to new year's day this is new year's day for each of these calendars the equalux is march 17th the equinox is march 21st the first sliver of the moon that appeared over israel after the equinox was april the third and a, uh, sorry, May the 2nd was the first sliver of the moon after the sun reaches Aries. Now, these four calendars, mostly I've noticed the equalux, the first sliver of the moon after the equinox, and the first sliver of the moon after Aries are mostly being used uh, from what I can tell. Not many are using the equinox uh, timeline that I can see, um, unless it's something I haven't seen. So here we are, Jesus on the cross, right here. I've circled these dates because it's amazing how when you look at all these calendars, they are all lining up within three days, all of them. Remember, Jesus was in the tomb for three days, and uh, after three days, he busted that tomb wide open like Watchman Adam says. I love how he says that. And... Uh, he, uh, he, he, he wrote on May the 19th on the first sliver of the moon after Aries. We passed the other dates. So here we are. Nisan 14, which is for the first sliver of the moon after the sun reaches Aries, May 16th. This is when the eclipse is going to happen. In, Eastern, in Israel, on the 16th, at 7.31 p.m., their sunset happens on the 16th. On the 16th, let's see, they are ahead of us. So, yes, it's the same thing. It'll still be the 16th for us. Did I do that wrong? That would be, I did that wrong. I have to redo that math. Let's see, if it's 7.30, it would be 7.31 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But at 12.11 a.m. is the max eclipse, maximum eclipse is at 12.11 a.m. And I had, uh, I, did, I did my math wrong here, so we have 12 hours out. So if it's 12.11 a.m., maximum eclipse in Israel, they are ahead of us. It would be 7, let's see, it would be 5.31 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we go forward. I want you to notice I've circled all the dates on the different calendars. This one, the first sliver of the moon after Aries, May 16th. This one, the first sliver of the moon after the equinox, May 17th. The, uh, the equalox, May 19th. That's when Jesus ascends. Back here, May 19th again, when Jesus rises. All the calendars come into play 
right around this time. So you could say that within that three-day period, Jesus is on the cross. Jesus defeats death three days later. And then you got the first sliver of the moon after the equinox, the second Passover. And then here on the 19th, you have Jesus ascending. And then Pentecost on May 22nd for the equinox. So it's just a lot of dates that fall in there. It's really cool how they are all kind of being used. And I think the Israel still two days early. I don't know how they did that since they're since they called the first sliver of the moon on April the 3rd. Yet they're using April the 1st as their first day. So May the 14th would fall two days earlier here on May the 16th would fall two days earlier. So it would be when Jesus rose as well. So it's, it's amazing how they're using all that. Here is civil twilight in Israel, 7.22 p.m. We go back to here. Whoops. Go back to here. And in Israel, it'll be 7.31 at sunset on the 16th. Um, I got to fix that. That's. Let me think about that. So... 12.31 a.m. for us is when this, let me see something here. I should have done this a little bit better. This is in Jacksonville, 12.11 a.m. If it's 12.11 a.m. in Jacksonville, that makes it 5, because they are ahead of us. So that would make it in the morning, yeah, so that is correct. So 7.31 a.m., that would be 7.31 a.m. Israel time. And notice that civil twilight is 1211. I'm using two different calendars and I got confused. For Jerusalem, civil twilight will be 722 p.m. So if it's 1211 a.m. for us, they're ahead of us and they would be at 731 or 732, yeah, 731 p.m. sunset Israel. So yeah, it would only be a few moments after sunset in Israel on the 16th. I have to go back over that and look at that again. Um, May 16th, 4.11 a.m. UTC time is when the full lunar eclipse takes place. This is what I want to talk about mainly in this video is um, the three different Gospels spoken to three different groups of people. You have the bride, you have the sleepy church, and you have the Jew. Matthew speaking to the Jew. It says to the Jew, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Speaking to the sleepy church, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Now he's speaking to the bride. Notice at the top, be ready any hour, be ready any hour, be ready any hour, be ready for service. Hmm. Be ready any hour and be ready for service. I think I've gone over this before. I'm not sure. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord. That's us. We're waiting for him. We're watching. We're trying to figure this out. When he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching, verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. This is us at the Passover meal in heaven. If he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch or find them so, blessed are those servants whenever he comes. He is going to find us watching and trying to figure this out. I got to go back over that, uh, that the times of when the uh, eclipse is so I can figure out what time that is. But uh, if civil twilight for them is 7.32 and the eclipse happens at 7.11, then there's a 20-something minute gap in there. And so I was uh, working on that. I guess I didn't do the time right on it, but I'll go back over it. And this, no. You see how much more he speaks to the bride. He, I mean, he literally goes into this very in-depth to the bride. To, to, to uh, mark the sleepy church, he doesn't say much. But they do have to watch. After we're gone, guess what? They are going to be watching and watching like nobody's business. They're going to be trying to figure it out. 
And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh in an hour, ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, pay close attention to this, when then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, and give to him their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing so. That's us. We will be watching. We'll be continuously trying to figure this out. We'll be making graphs, and we'll be making mistakes, and we'll be trying to still understand um, where there's nothing more we could dream of in our whole world than Jesus returning. We are not thinking of anything else except for our Lord to return. But, but he makes this comment because Peter's asking, are you speaking to us in a parable? Or are you speaking to all of us? What are you doing? And we know that Luke is uh, spoken to straight. He's not, he's not spoken to in parables. These are actual things. And what does he warn? He's talking now to those who are listening but are refusing to watch. They are not watching. They're kind of, they're the mockers. They're the scoffers. They don't think this is really going to happen, but they're kind of watching. They do believe. They're faithful. The saints are very faithful. They just don't think you can know when this is going to happen. And I think that in the last, God's not going to tell us until the very end because he doesn't want Satan to know. So, but, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall. So, so all of us are like, when's he coming? When's he coming? Has he delayed? He has not delayed. This timeline that just because we're trying to figure out and we have been incorrect does not mean that the Lord has delayed in any kind of way. The date he had set up, the date he had set up from before the foundations of the world, he had a date. And it's set in stone. It's never going to change. As we try to figure it out, every date that comes and goes by, we're just trying to figure it out. But that's what a watcher does. We continue to watch. And he likes that we're watching, but he can't let Satan know. Satan cannot know the date. Why? And, and, and if the date were just published, let's say the date were published 2,000 years ago when Jesus was, uh, you know, on the cross, he said the date. No one would have searched. No one would have just poured through the scripture, you know. I mean, we just pour through this and try to figure it out and highlight every part and try to understand what we're reading and and search and search and search. And why do we do this? While we do this, we have become closer and more intimate with our Creator. This is Jesus, and the Word became flesh, and the flesh dwelt among us. And we study and study and study and try to figure it out, and that's an intimate relationship. It's not about the date. We want to know it. We want to, we want to figure it out, but it's not about the date. It's about the journey that we take on the way to the date and how much we've learned. And that's the most important part. It is, It has become a very intimate, very close relationship as we go through this, trying to figure it out. So the date has set. It's set in stone. It's never changed. And as we try to figure it out, and it's been like that for 2,000 years, there's been dates that have been set over the last 2,000 years. There's a book out. I don't remember the name of it. There is a book out that shows how people thought he was going to return after 100 years and then 200 years. And every millennium, that go, every uh, century that goes by, people thought, this is it, this is it. No one in any other generation could have ever dreamed that the Jews would take back over Israel on May 14th of 1948. They could have never dreamed that. And then when it happened, things really lit up after that. And so we keep searching. So let me continue reading here. But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat his man's servants and maidens and to eat and drink and be drunken, 
So he's describing a group of people that were watching, but they got angry. They gave up. They didn't keep watching. They got mad. They started beating their servants and getting drunk all the time. Why did they do that? Because they just don't believe he's coming back. They gave up. They were like seeds planted in rocks that sprung up, but then withered away because there was no water for them. They did not spring up in good soil. So they watched for a minute and they gave up. The Lord of that servant will come in a day. Pay attention to this part. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in thunder, cut, cut him under, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Isn't that sad? Isn't that just the saddest thing? You spent all this time trying to figure it out, you watched all the, the videos, you sat down and read, and you worked so hard to try to figure it out. And the saddest part is you stopped, you gave up, you started getting drunk and giving up, you started falling back into the world. And why? Why would you do that? You worked that diligently trying to figure it out. And that's how you can tell who a bride is and who a saint is. Not giving up on the people. They're, they're going to be saved. They have the Holy Spirit, but they are not invested in this. They're, it's not an intimate relationship. Ten virgins, five had oil, five did not. Five went to buy oil. They had to work for their salvation. They had to go get oil. The other five already had oil. When they came back knocking, hey, let us in, he said, depart from me, for I know you not. No is an intimate word. No, to when the Bible talks about he went into the tent with her and he knew her. That was an intimate thing. It's not intimate with the people who are not watching. They're going to be saved, though. Don't don't give up on them. The tribulation saying is very important to God, and they will be saved. But they gave up. And, and how sad is it that you would spend an amount of time watching and then just give up on watching? So. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, knew, there's that word, intimate, and prepared not himself, neither did, according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. These, they, they knew it. I guess that word wouldn't be intimate because they knew it, but they were beaten with many stripes. So they're going to go through tribulation. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes for whosoever. See, so, so these people that don't even know, they're not even intimate enough to know that there's a timeline. And there's people all over the world that are not uh, involved. With, they'll be beaten, but not as much as those who knew. They knew, but they just, they just couldn't believe it. Believe. They said, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat his men, servants, and maidens. He says in his heart, my Lord delay it. So we cannot go down that path. We do not go down that path. We will keep our hearts pure and we know he's coming. Just like when I saw that, you know, when I heard the trumpet blast while I was making a video a couple of videos ago and I started to go outside because that's where my heart is. And the same thing when I saw that fish in the sky, I thought, I told my wife, this is it, we're going. And then I realized it was a shuttle. But it doesn't matter because we're watching and our hearts leap out of our chest when we think that this is it, this is it. And that's that's what we're looking forward to. Who, uh, for who, uh, for unto who, whomsoever such is given of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask more. So remember, some of us have been given so much and then at the very end, we kind of kind of walk away from it and don't. I mean, seriously, don't. This is up to you. This is, this is, this is all you. And, uh, you know, you keep watching. You keep praying. You keep going to the quiet place by yourself. And, uh, you know, all new Christians, I would, I would suggest that you go pray and start watching the videos. Don't watch mine. Watch uh, other people's. they got better math than I do, <laughs> you know. Just uh, just keep watching and keep waiting. Um, 
every little noise, every little, every dream, uh, numbers pop up that surprise me. Um, the space shuttle thought that was a fish in the sky. I thought that was it. I thought Jesus was coming for us. You know, every everything that we that makes us jump, you know, is just evidence of what we are. And so many of you, I've talked to so many of you that I heard a, I heard a trumpet blast, or I saw this number, and I thought this was it. And people send me so many uh, different calendars and different dates, and that's absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. There's a there's a, a calendar that's looking at actually. I think tomorrow even, uh, because uh, they're calling the 5th of IR on the 7th, I believe. So, you know, it, it, Israel's the nation for 74 years on the, on the 7th of IR, which is, uh, you know, moves around because they use the moon. And I just, I, I'm not sure 100% about that, but I'm not going to discount anything because I, I just don't know. I haven't had uh, an angel pair to put in my bed said, you're right, and using the Equilux. You got it. That just hasn't happened. So, um, but take the timeline, and um, like I said before, you can get it on. Um, where did it go? You can get it right here on endtime-studies.com, and you can come in here and download it and look at it for yourself. And we've uh, uh, Sandy has fixed it all. She has. I went through mine and fixed it and then realized she'd already done it. And so I circled all the ones that match, but you can see it's just, it's just absolutely amazing. These are four different calendars. The Jewish calendar is actually two days earlier. So any date up here that you see for, you know, uh, anything that's happening, uh, their, their calendar is actually falling two days earlier. So like uh, Equilux of May 19th would be May 17th for them, but you know, just keep watching. Keep watching. Don't give up. In the comment section, I love information. I love uh, high-tech information about things. And some of you just floor me. I've been studying for a year, and I got this. I'm like, wow, I've been studying for 30 years. <laughs> and, you know, in these last days, I'm telling you right now, I have never seen anything like that. I'm seeing right now uh, just young people just being led by the Holy Spirit, their minds are being opened and they're seeing things us older uh, researchers have never seen. And when I see it, you know, I mean, like this uh, interrupts 165 and uh, what's his name? I think it's Mike over there, actually. My name's Mike, too. I believe that they've, uh, you know, discovered something very incredible that the Gospels are actually speaking to different groups of people. And when I saw it and I started studying the different Gospels, I'm like, it's true. It's absolutely true. It's, it's talking to different people. So hang in there. We're almost there. I mean, this weekend's a big weekend. Next weekend's a big uh, uh, thing to, uh, timeline to watch. And remember, even if it passes, the date is set in stone. Don't be one of those that say, my Lord delayeth. He has not, he is not delayed. He is not delayed. Our understanding is, and, and just remember this journey that we're on, trying to figure this out, and the, the, the deep dive we do into the Bible, trying to understand what we're looking at. Dr. Barry Oz, uh, you can't beat his page. I mean, that, he's, he's done some deep dives that I've, that I've learned so much from watching his videos myself. These are just our journey on the way to that date and this is just evidence it's evidence of what's going on in our hearts and what we really want to see and um i don't even pay any mind to the mockers and scoffers some of them are just mocking and they're not mean so i leave their comments i don't take comments off of mine i don't stop comments unless it's just something just terrible i i don't even bother with it because i don't care i know i'm doing the right thing one guy says i'm tickling people's ears and i said there's so many things on this planet, 8 billion people on this planet. And how many subscribers does one of the biggest Christian uh, like YouTubers have? 50,000? 100,000? There's 8 billion people on the planet. Nobody's tickling anybody's ears with 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> this is not happening. You can go watch a dog riding a skateboard. You can... Uh, there's all kinds of things you can watch on YouTube that have a million, two million, 
not, nobody has, I don't think anybody has a billion followers, but those people are tickling their ears. They want to hear about the abortion issue. They want to hear about the economy and the microchips, and they're tickling their ears with that stuff. That's what's tickling people's ears, not the gospel, not reading straight out of the Bible so you can discern for yourself what you're seeing. That is not tickling anybody's ears. Um, not telling you that if you send money, you're going to go to heaven. That, that, that's, that's a little bit, that's tickling people's ears. That's, that is not true in the slightest. You know, the way there, your path there is, I think, research and trying to figure this out. I think that's the path. So anyway, Repo Man 64, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to figure out the times exactly of when the eclipse is happening, what time is civil twilight in Israel, and what time the eclipse is in Israel. And that's where I got confused. I got confused between my Eastern Standard Time and Israel. And I think... I think it's about 20 minutes difference, and I know there's a verse in the Bible that says, and there was silence in heaven for the space of about a half an hour, and so I found that, And but I have to sit down and redo this and try to figure this out, so we'll see you next time, Repo Man 64, keep watching, like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel, just so that after we are gone, which might be tonight, it might be the 14th, it might be the 16th, you see all those dates lining up? all the way up to the 19th. Pentecost is coming up on uh, May the 22nd on the Enoch timeline using the Equilux. So we're in the window of this. Uh, there is a passage in the Bible that says you're unclean for seven days and that at three days, at three days, you have to perform a cleansing ceremony as according to the Jews so that on the seventh day you are clean and on the eighth day you can, you're, you're totally allowed to enter, enter the temple. So is it possible that on the 14th, when Israel becomes a nation, we wait seven days until the 21st, which is Pentecost? So keep watching. We'll, we'll, I think in the end, again, Amos 3.7, I think in the end that God is going to tell each and every single one of us individually in his own way, an angel might appear at the foot of your bed just like he did for Mary to tell her you're going to have a child, just like he did for Mary's husband, or future husband. Um, you're, what's, what's happening with your wife is from God. Continue to marry her. Don't touch her, but marry her. And uh, so I think a similar thing is happening or going to happen to where a lot of us are going to get to. And I'll tell you what, YouTube's going to be flooded. It's going to be When that happens for me, I'm going to be all over YouTube going, hey, guess what? This is when it's going to happen. But you'll already know because I'm going to tell you too. Anyway, let me go. So I stop rambling. Chat with you later.